I want to introduce someone. He's not a stranger to us here at the assembly. Uh, He has ministered here many, many times. And just for those that may not know the relationship of uh, the man of God that's going to bring the word, it was 28 years ago that we left um, Oklahoma City as youth and associate pastors and went to BB, Arkansas. And Pastor Dorsey was the pastor there. And um, there, there are people that God brings in your life uh, and then there's people that bring, God brings in your life that have a lasting impact and a lasting relationship. And I'm just going to be very transparent this morning. I have a lot of ministry friends um, across the nation, even in this community. But I have very few, and when I say few, it's few, um, of minister friends that have walked a journey with me as long as this man has. Um, ever since, since 28 years ago, since we met and we were on staff with him, I was thinking, Pastor Dorsey, as we were during worship, and I was thinking about that 28 years, and I think, I believe, I, can, I, I know I can honestly say this, there has not been a major life decision or a major ministry decision that I have made without having counsel and talking to you for 28 years. This man knows me inside and out. He knows the things that uh, I have stepped out in faith in, and he's looked at me and said, good luck. (laughs) And then there's times that he'll look me in the eye and he'll challenge my faith. Everybody needs someone in their life that you go to, and they can tell you that you've got spinach in your teeth and that you can trust God. And this is what this man has done for 28 years in our family's life. So it is an honor. This is the first time in 23 years that I haven't preached on pastor, my pastor appreciation. And we were talking about, I said, I, I, you know, I, I appreciate it, but I think the greatest gift that I can receive on pastor appreciation is not to preach. I want to be preached to. And so this morning, Pastor Dorsey and his family, Sister Dorsey and their granddaughter, they have come here today to share in this special day for us. And so will you help honor the man that has been part of our life for 28 years and has made a major impact on our lives. So, Brother Dorsey, we love you. Thank you so much for coming and being here today with us. A day of honor. I want to share with you today four reasons why you should honor your pastor. All my life, I heard my parents talk about a man that they called Pastor Haymaker. And now for four generations, what that man said is still alive. He married my mother and father, dedicated the babies, spoke into their future, encouraged them in their ministry. And though he is not alive, he still lives. And I can assure Pastor Gary and Crystal Wheat that there is a day coming that they will hear people say, Pastor Wheat did it this way. He said this, he'll always be my pastor. That is the imprint that you're making in your tenure in this body. As a noun, the word honor in the Bible means to esteem, to value, or show great respect. To honor someone is to value them highly or to bestow value upon them. Giving honor means showing respect, appreciation to someone for their contribution, their achievements, and their qualities. One reason why that we need to celebrate a pastor is because they're to be honored because of their calling and their placement as pastors. In Ephesians 4.11, the word says, Now these are the gifts of Christ, 
that he gave to the church apostles, prophets, evangelists, and pastors and teachers. Romans 13, 7 says, Honor to whom honor is due. Three times in the book of Proverbs, it says humility comes before honor. And I can assure you that Pastor Wheat is a man of humility. You saw the tears in his eyes when he just started talking about how you have accepted his ministry and his family. And when he is talking about ministry, he always represents you as a body as to what you have accomplished together. It's never about him. Understand that it was God that called him. Let me share a secret with you that probably you have not heard. Pastor Gary felt a call to preach, and he went to a very well-known leader in our movement and shared that he felt God was calling him to ministry. And the response that he got was uncomely. It was actually a form of rejection. The leader said, well, you really don't necessarily fit in ministry, go get you a four-year education and live a good life. I'm so glad he didn't listen to that man because God called him. We are not voted on. We are not selected. We have been drawn by the power of the Holy Spirit and Pastor Gary and Crystal have proven themselves to be people of ministry with the hand of God upon their life. If I was to describe Pastor Wheat's ministry, it would be wherever you place him, it immediately gets better. It's described in the life of Joseph in these words, the hand of the Lord was upon him. And I can assure you that it is God that has called him and not man, nor did he call himself. They have been placed in this church by the hand of God. God put them here. He talked about talking to me about decisions that he was making. And I remember he came in as a youth pastor and he was crying and I knew what was coming. He said, there's a church in Oklahoma City that don't even have a church building. They just rent a building. And he said, we're going to, they want, they need a pastor. And I just feel like that God wants me to go be their pastor. And I said, well, go. He went, prospered, built a new building had that thing moving quite good and he gets a call from Siloam Springs. He calls and said, you know, things are good here, but he said, I've got this, I've got this call over here. What should I do with that? And I said, Gary, don't go. (laughs) Once again, I'm so glad you didn't listen to a man. (laughs) He is here by the sovereignty of God. Let me tell you what a pastor is in Scripture. Jeremiah 3.15 says, And I will give you shepherds after my own heart, who will guide you with knowledge and understanding. A pastor is a shepherd that familiarizes himself with the needs of his sheep, but his heart is the heart of God. And if I know anybody's heart, I know Pastor Gary Wheat's heart. And his heart is to love God first and then to love people. He loves you genuinely. And because that he loves you, he will guide you into a future. He will teach you and prepare you for whatever ministry or giftedness that you have in the kingdom of God. And as a pastor, we need to understand that he is God's gift to the people. God's gift. God pays attention to how people treat his gift. 
Did you ever give someone a precious gift and then back off to see how they would treat it? I'm going to talk about it, not Gary. I had this really nice, I won't mention what it is, and I gave it to my youth pastor. I just knew he'd be excited. He seemed to be so excited about what I'd given him. And I'm scrolling through eBay, and there is his name and what I gave him. I thought, you won't be getting anything else from me, bozo. <laughs> God pays attention to how you treat his gift. He says that if you reject this messenger, that you are rejecting him. If God called him and God placed him, if you speak against what God is doing in their leadership and in their life, then you're coming against God himself. I realize that is a direct word, but they are gifts from God for our betterment and for our good. Secondly, the pastor should be celebrated or honored for their contribution. What is it that Pastor Wheat does that you pay him for that nobody else in the church can do. Can you visit the sick? Can you go to the hospital? Can you unlock the church doors? Can you lead somebody to Jesus at the altar? Can you lay hands on somebody and believe that God will heal them? Why are we paying him then? We are paying him. He is our spiritual leader because it is God that speaks to Moses and shows him the future of Israel, shows him the kind of worship that they are supposed to have and the kind of building they're supposed to have and how the worship is supposed to be designed. That did not come through a committee. That didn't come through a teamwork. That came because a man had an experience at a burning bush and God gave him a vision of delivering people. And the reason that Pastor Wheat is the spiritual head of this church is because he has a vision for the future of this church. God give him the vision. When you were in the older building, and he said, I just feel like we're locked. We can't grow to a higher level. We just need to change locations. And on the inside, I'm saying, ooh. But I knew God could do it. I believed in him. Because I know that if God shows me something, it belongs to me. And when he began to cast the vision as being the good follower and body of believers that you are, you pulled alongside him and there's nobody got a nicer building and facility than what you have. Why are you all so quiet? I'm talking about you. Come on, pat yourself on the back. Say amen. <laughs> that was so lame. Because he has a vision. His contribution is not only the vision, but his contribution is the mission. He'd been here for a while, and uh, we're talking on the phone. I talk to him just about every week. And he, he was kind of tearful, and he said, I had this experience at a gas station. And he said, I just believe that God's speaking to me that we... We have a, a, a theme, a mission for our church. And I said, what is it? He said, a place of hope. And everything began to change in this body when that word hope started coming out of your mouth. That is the mission. He has released you to use your gift in the church because that is his assignment. He is an excellent leader. He's an excellent mentor. In Ephesians 4.12, the word says his assignment is for the perfecting of the saints or the maturing of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. He is duplicating himself, his information, 
his vision, his mission through the body of Christ. He has brought healing to a hurting church. He has brought stability and unity. He was not satisfied with himself, so he goes back to school and gets a master's degree in leadership. And as he has grown, people talk about, they they ask, what do you think the secret is to church growth? And I say longevity, and I also, I'll say something about that later, but my statement about that is this, the church only grows as the pastor grows. And those of you that have spent time sitting at the feet of this man of God and woman of God have watched both of them transform and move to a different level of ministry. And as they have grown, they have began to release and to impart responsibilities to you. And the church has been blessed as a whole. He has developed a strong missions vision that touches the globe. Brandon referred to it. But you have to understand that you are a dynamic church. You are a healthy church. You are a church that gives to missions because you have a heart that understands that there are unfortunate people that live in poverty and live without the common knowledge of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you have opened your heart to buy into the vision of this church as it relates to missions. And Pastor Gary has traveled the world and has seen the effects of where those dollars have gone. And I commend his leadership this morning in leading you to being a strong missions church. He has mourned the loss of loved ones with you. He's buried your dead. He's dedicated your babies. He's conducted your weddings. He has walked with you through crises in your marriage. He's prayed for you to be favored by God. He has brought Nelson University into the house. He set up Fire Institute for advanced discipleship. He has represented your church by traveling the world, teaching Acts 2 to develop healthy churches. You know, pardon me for being who I am. That's all I can be. But I'm trying to put put this in words that will be nice and won't be misunderstood. I don't know how to say it, so I won't say it. You realize that there are people that want this man? I got a word for you. Who would want a pastor that nobody wants? (laughs) Because of the advancement that God and the intimacy that he has had with God and the leadership that he brings with the body of Christ, there are people out there that would love to have his church. There are those that would love to have him. But everything that he does represents you because you have allowed him to develop and to grow, and he takes credit for none of that. He's been honored by serving on the district council level as an executive presbyter for two terms. But above the contributions that he has made, the greatest thing that we can say about Pastor and and Crystal Wheat is this. It's the greatest thing that anybody can give you. They have given you their heart. That's a dangerous thing. I deal with people that have emotional pain 
And one of the most difficult things I've ever asked anybody to do that has had emotional pain is tear the wall down of self-protection you place around yourself. You select people. You only allow people to come into your life on your terms. You don't allow them to be themselves. It's a false wall of security. And I say it's vulnerability when you take that wall down at the risk of being hurt, at the risk because love is worth the risk. Take the wall down. Let people be approachable in your life. Does this sound like Jesus? You can come to me if. He said, whosoever will, let him come. And whenever I keep people out of my life, I'm no more, I'm evermore not like Christ. If I keep you here. But the risk of being a pastor is we open our hearts to you and you can hurt it or you can accept it and you can embrace it. And our roots can grow together, and that's exactly what has happened as he has shared his heart, and Crystal have shared their heart with you. He referred to it in his comments. You shared with him the loss of his dad. I'll never forget when my father passed away, and he lived a three-hour drive away from where I was pastoring. And on the day of his funeral, a third of the congregation was from B.B. Arkansas. And they will never know what that meant to me to have them present. You witnessed Ashlyn grow from a five-year-old child to a woman. You saw her develop her gifts, play the guitar on the worship team, graduate college in Mary Cherokee. You celebrated with the wheats when Mitchell came into the family. And you've witnessed his passion to play the drums and enter college and to become a man. He has given you his heart. You are his family. I can tell you as a pastor that because that we love you as the Lord loves you to the best of our ability that we are closer to you than many people that are in our own family. That's how we see you. The third reason why pastors are to be honored is the pastor is to be honored for his character. Again, Brandon referred to this, but I want to give you a biblical basis for it. In 1 Timothy 3, 1, the saying is trustworthy. If anyone aspires the office of an overseer, he desires a noble task. Therefore, an overseer must be above reproach, live a holy life. Gary Wheat is a holy man of God. The husband of one wife, his marriage is strong and is an example to everybody in this room as to how that love is supposed to be in a marriage. Sober-minded, it means he's serious about his assignment. He's not here to earn a dollar from you. He's here to be your servant. And he understands their accountability of this vast body because there's going to be a time that he's going to stand before God and God is going to judge him for every word that he has spoken over you. It is a serious assignment. Self-controlled. Self-disciplined. Every morning he's in the gym drinking coffee. Respectable. You say the name Gary Wheat to anybody that knows Gary Wheat anywhere, whether it's in Oklahoma or Arkansas, wherever his roots have taken him and his relationships, and immediately it is a name that is above reproach. It's a name that is associated with that smile he's got. When he became my youth pastor early in the morning, he'd be there before I got there, and he would office door would be open, and I'd turn around to go in my office. Good morning, pastor! And I thought, is this for real? <laughs> I'm an early riser. First thing I do is turn the coffee pot on, and I get my Bible. 
I am a morning person. He's the morning person. To be around Gary is, to me, a joyful event because he loves to laugh. Though he's serious about his assignment, he is very hospitable. He loves being with people. That is a qualification. Able to teach, he does that very capably. Gentle is always how he wants to conduct himself. I've heard him say, I've been upset, but I didn't want to say anything. I gave myself space until I could calm down so that I would present myself in a proper manner. In today's world, you can read the newspaper and you're seeing great names that are being mentioned that have had problems with their lives, just like you do. But when you find a man, I have this saying. This is Glenn Dorsey, chapter 1. If a preacher gets to heaven, if he gets there, he's going to be greatly rewarded. And I'm telling you that Pastor Gary and Crystal are people of character, worthy of being honored. And the last thing I want to share with you is, number four, the pastor is to be honored for his tenure. For more than a third of his life, More than, that means when he came here, he didn't have that gray hair. That's quite an investment. There's something that's dangerous about tenure. And that is we can be taken for granted. We, we've been here and we'll always be here. We just assume, we just assume, well, next Sunday, Pastor Wheat's going to be here. Next year, Pastor Wheat's going to be here 10 years. And it becomes kind of like a marriage. If you forget an anniversary, how does your wife feel about you? Well, pastors are kind of like wives. We like to know that you value us. And once a year, I always look forward to Pastor Appreciation Day. I loved it because... I got to hear what I meant to people's lives. Now, while I'm talking, I want, you've got a piece of paper there in your pew, and I want you to take that. And as I continue to talk, I want you to listen, and I want you to allow the Lord to begin to speak to you, okay? Does it mean anything to you that pastor has stayed through thick and thin. He stayed. Here's what happens behind closed doors in the heart, the back, the back private life of a pastor. It hurts us when we experience rejection and people leave the church regardless of the reason. We feel like I should have done something better. It, uh, it must have been my fault that people left. And though our head knows that we've done the right thing because there, there's a heart connection with every person. I don't want to lose one soul. I don't want anybody leaving this. I don't understand why anybody would want to leave a church like this one. It hurts Sometimes as a pastor, we have to confront people because we're leaders and we are called to protect the flock and we can't tell everybody the reason why somebody may have been released or somebody no longer comes to church. We can't share those things because 
of obvious reasons. They're too sensitive in nature. It can't become common knowledge, but yet from the natural eye, that person may have appeared to be great and wonderful. But the pastor knows, and he can't share it. And he used to be appreciated because of one thing. He's protecting the body. He's protecting the body. I didn't know what that meant till I was gone on vacation. I came back. A lady by the name of Reba Ballard came up to me and said, Oh, Pastor, we missed you. I said, Church was great while you was gone. I said, That's wonderful. That's the way it should be. But she said, I can't tell you what it means to have you back. And before I could say thank you, she said, Let me tell you why. She said, because when you're here, we feel safe. We know that you're not going to let some weirdo loose in the house. You're not going to put somebody in the pulpit that we can't trust. Thank you, Pastor, for protecting us. And Pastor Wheat, thank you for the moments that you've had to be a little bit on the side of confrontation, dealing with issues. But you did it for the whole. Thank you. And then there is this word called comparison. Every husband likes this word when his wife says, Why can't you be like so and so's husband? You like that, sir? Do you like for your wife to compare you with other men? I don't think so. What's wrong with me? Am I not good enough? Criticism. Well, brother so-and-so does it this way. Well, wait just a minute. He's, he's in a different church, different personality, different vision, different mission. You come in here from another church. Well, our pastor always did it this way. Well, go check the front door. Is it the same place? Criticism hurts. It's disappointing to us when people that we've seen come to the Lord backslide and go back into the world. People that we have trusted very close to us betray us. It hurts when we've invested our lives in people. I've given people a size of $1,000 that walked away and I see them on the street and they act like they don't even know me. I have to tell you, that hurts. There's this dealing with over-expectation. Not allowed to be human, not allowed to make mistakes. We feel like sometimes we have to be someone that you want us to be, and that's not a good thing. Some people think we should be more spiritual Others think we should not be as spiritual. But let me share with you the most personal thing about the heart of a pastor. This is true. I'm giving you the real stuff. The most difficult thing that a pastor deals with when he gets away from his body of believers and he starts examining his life is this. when we feel that we have disappointed you or failed you in ministry. Nothing hurts any worse than that. Is if we feel that we have disappointed you. One of the things that I admire so much about Pastor Gary is he's a man of excellence. And you always hear these words. The staff members will tell you he's, his word is, we can do better. We can always improve. And I promise you that they are giving you the best that they can give you. So how can we honor our pastor? You have that piece of paper in your hand. Keep your ears open and Get a pen in your hand so you can write something down if you feel like you would like to. How can we honor a pastor? Words of affirmation. Words of affirmation. You see him do something that honors the kingdom of God, tell him, I'm so proud you're my pastor. 
I was so proud to see you at the school. I was so proud to see you at that ball game. I was so proud to see you out there working at Teen Challenge. I'm so glad that you don't drive an old beat up car. I wouldn't want to introduce my pastor or somebody that was needy in poverty. What we're going to do today, we're not going, we're not going to bless a man of God because he has need. Honor has nothing to do with need. Honor has everything to do with, I want to show you how I feel about you. And I want to do it the best way that I know how. Think about words that, and times in your life that he has ministered to you and your family or to your students. And then there are personal gifts that matters. I have a, I have a, a hunting knife that I keep in my truck. It's been there for years. The man in the church handmade in the church, and it's, it's an excellent knife. You can cut paper with it. And every time I get in that truck and I open that box, I see that knife and I'm reminded, this man loved me. It took time to build that knife. It's a quality knife. After going through the most difficult season of my life, I almost left my wife, my kids, the church, and almost got in my car and drove away in the middle of a building program like this. God sent Dennis Thrasher by that very day and spared me, saved my life. We go through that building program and I stay, and it took me a couple of years before I could even enjoy the building. In our 25th anniversary, we're outside, everybody's having charcoal hamburgers. And I've got my back to everybody, and they said, Pastor, look! And I turned around and looked, and coming around from behind a house that sits near the church was a brand new Chevrolet four wheel drive Z71 pickup. I was speechless, I couldn't do nothing but cry. I still have that truck. I'm not going to give it to anybody. I'm not going to do anything till I'm dead. Because every time I crawl in it, I feel the love of the people that provided that for me. I didn't need it. But they said, we just want to show you how much we love you. Because they're worthy. So here's some ways that we can honor a pastor. Here you go. Honor them with personal notes of how you touched your life. Honor them with unexpected gifts. Not a special birthday, not an anniversary. Just come up to them someday. Just, just blow their mind with something that you heard them say. Boy, I sure would like to have that. Or something that he likes to eat. Brother Gorman, Marvin Gorman, was a mentor of mine, kind of a spiritual father. And I heard him tell this story. He said that there was a lady in his church that came to him one day, and she said, Pastor, this year I'm going to pay for every cup of coffee that you drink. You bring me a seat, I'm going to pay you for every cup of coffee you drink. Would Andy's be a good substitute? <laughs> That might be dangerous. Rod Loy, who pastors North Little Rock first, would go get his pastor's car every Saturday and wash it. And on Sunday morning, he knew what kind of donut the pastor enjoyed, and he would always have a fresh cup of coffee, his favorite coffee, and his donut sitting on his desk when the pastor came in. I had a lady in my church that had a gift of writing poems. And the strange thing was she always, her timing was impeccable. Whenever she would write a poem, it would be in a season that I really needed to know something or hear something from God. And she would mail me a poem that God gave her in the night. Here's something. Put, uh, a, let me tell you what to put on your paper and you work it out from there, okay? 
You ready? Put I O U. I don't see anybody writing. I O U. And you just fill in the blank with what you would like to do, but just let me give you a few ideas. I will mow your grass one time for nothing. You might get spiritual and do it for a year. I'll give you a free lunch. I owe you. I owe you a free round of golf. I owe you a dinner in my home. And I owe you means that he can collect whatever you put on that card. All he has to do is say, hand you the card. And with joy, you say, I'm so excited, Pastor, that you didn't set on this because I wanted to show you how much I love you. Crystal, what's your favorite perfume? Light blue? No dark blue, light blue. Hmm, I wonder what that smells like. I owe you light blue. Whatever you get creative with, get creative with it. It can be large, it can be small. But it's, it, this is personal. This isn't coming from the church as a whole. This is coming from you. Pastor, I want you to know. You don't need it, maybe, but I want to do it. I want to honor you because you have touched my life. You can honor them by encouraging them. Forgive him when he makes mistakes, but above everything. Pray for them. Especially when you know they're under spiritual attack. I have a man to this day that while I'm standing in this pulpit is praying that everywhere that God takes me, every day, every day, this man says, Pastor, I pray for you every day. That's priceless. That don't cost anybody a dime. But does it ever change our life? I owe you. Have you put something on that paper? Pastor, I love you. We're going to ask our ushers to come, and we're going to receive an offering this morning and make your check out to the assembly. It's on the screen there behind you if you would like to give an offering. And I absolutely believe today is going to be a day of honor. We want the wheats to walk out of this place knowing and feeling in their hearts that 20 years of investment 23 years of investment. It has been joy for them. They've loved it. But today is a special day. Today we're thanking God for His gift. Ushers, would you come please? Father, for every gift and every IOU, and if you would put your IOU in the offering, please, as it's taken. Father, I pray for every person today that honors the one that you have sent. Lord, this couple has given to this city and to this church the best that they have. Lord, they've held nothing back. They've opened their heart. And Father, I pray today that there will be people that will give exorbitant amounts. That those, Lord, who have nothing to give have something they can do. But all of us together, Lord, make such an impact upon this ministry that we want to stand them on our shoulders and say, God, take us to a higher level. Thank you for this team that has been established in this church under the leadership of these pastors. Thank you, Lord, for these facilities. Thank you, Lord, for brothers and sisters that are in Christ. And Lord, thank you for the pastors that you've put 
in this house. I pray, Lord, that whatever is offered in honor will be repaid, not because it has been given for expectation of return, but because sowing is a part of reaping. And Lord, you said that if we bless others, that you will bless us at the same level that we bless. Not out of need, but out of honor. Bless this body as they give in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Gary and Crystal, would you come and stand one more time in front of this beautiful body of believers? Your pastor. Father, we thank you for the ministry of this team, for the lifetime investment that they've made. We ask you, Lord, to bless their health, bless their marriage, bless their children. We pray, Lord, that there will be continued fresh oil and fresh anointing and fresh vision and fresh purpose added to their life. Lord, in this special occasion, on this day, May there be a wind of the Spirit that just encircles them and that covers them from the heart of their people. That this is not just a show. This is the reality. We are so proud to call you our, our pastors. Lord, bless the future of this church as together we walk together until the trumpet sounds and we enter heaven's gates. Thank you for standing and honoring your pastors. I'm sure probably you want to say something, Pastor, and I'm going to step down. Now. Just want to say uh, thank you for loving us when we're doing good. But most of all, thank you for loving us when we mess up. <laughs> it's a place of hope where there are no perfect people. It begins with us because we're not perfect. I uh, had a had a gentleman, I was pastoring my first church, Wayne Jones, he was a missionary, and we were pastoring in Norman, and still not sure what I'm doing, but I definitely didn't know what I was doing back then, and uh, I said, man, Dwayne, I said, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing, I said, God's put this in my heart to pastor and love people, and he said, Gary, he said, you can be the best preacher and best communicator. He said, you can be the best fundraiser for missions. He said, you can be the best friend to everybody. He said, and none of that will matter if they don't know that you love them. Never forgot that. So I want you to know that we love you. We love you so much, we want to spend eternity with you in heaven. So be sure you're there. Amen? So God bless you. We love you. Thank you for being here today. We'll see you Wednesday night. For prayer service, God's going to do some great things.